My name is Marie Norden. I am Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. I've been a part of Fedora long before that, though, working on graphic design, the design team, and the badges project. So I think on to Mariana. Hi, everybody. Good evening for where I come from. Uh, I am a contributor, Fedora contributor based in Albania, in Tirana. My day job is a product owner. Uh, I have been in the Fedora community for the past five years. A few weeks ago, I received the badge for having my account, my first account for five years now. Long time. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is it pretty much for me. Samantha? So, hey guys, good morning, evening, afternoon, night. But uh, I'm Shumantro, I hail from India, and I am part of the QA team. Uh, I run test days and help out Murray and Mariana on the revamp effort for the entire project. Uh, that's, that's mostly what it is all about, moving it to Murray now. Cool. So we've done this update at a couple different conferences. Just want to say we're doing it a little bit differently this time. We're going to try to go through the steps a little bit quicker and focus a bit more on the deliverables and the outcomes of this revamp because we've been working on it for almost a year and a half now. Um, and we're getting a lot closer. There's a lot of work, especially for the three of us, but I will start a little bit at the beginning, but I'm gonna to try to do it quicker than I usually do. So um, a little bit about how we got to the community outreach revamp. So uh, the revamp is focused on the Fedora Ambassadors program. It's a long-term uh, program uh, in Fedora, like 15 plus years, and it's had quite a history. So for a long time, it was just a huge success and it was continuing to build and people were, um, you know, sharing the good word of Fedora. Um, as things progressed, though, things changed, processes changed, um, how we were able to do things changed. Um, the program kind of continued to grow without really scaling. There was some disruptions as far as changes in leadership and some people, some key people were feeling burnout. So all of that kind of resulted in a stall of the ambassador program. And because of that, we had some other kind of outreach efforts and things uh, that kind of resulted from the ambassador stalling. So we had the join SIG and we had the advocate program and um, we had some other, you know, we had community operations also kind of focused on outreach. So we had all these different teams and it kind of started to become like a confusing place. Like, where do I go? What do I do? So when I stepped into the FK role, I was able to write up a proposal um, that kind of talked about how we would streamline all of that and how we would kind of revamp things to bring it to a better, more elevated place and basically bring clarity around these different teams. So um, it's kind of an idea to bring all of the different outreach teams under one umbrella and um, we want people to understand where the documentation is, how they can find it, how they're able to get um, resources like the swag or maybe they need designs made, all these types of things. So um, this was the main proposal. So I, I proposed that to the Mindshare committee. They were all about it. It then became an objective from there because we realized this was going to be quite a bit of work. So. Um, I think that's a pretty good overview of kind of how we got here and what the proposal was and the goal of it. So on to the next, I'll pass to Mariana. Thanks, Marie. So I will briefly mention what we have been doing in the past one year and a half. So when the proposal was accepted and we formed our little team, we started working on the next steps and how we could make this initial proposal actually something that um, that we can present to you all. The first thing, the first few things that we did was actually prepare a list of uh, questions for the Mindshare. We did the, our very first community outreach 
survey where we got very, very, very valuable feedback. And many of the things that we did next actually were based on the analysis of that um, survey. One of my, um, one of the most interesting uh, actually results, results from that survey is that we found out that people do a lot of Fedora um, events and activities and et cetera without actually letting the Mindshare committee know. So there is a lot of Fedora activity out there and we're not aware of, which is both good and bad. Um, later on, we became a Fedora objective. Uh, objectives are Fedora goals that are meant to be completed uh, in a few releases uh, of time. Most of the time there are technical objectives, but lately we have, been, we have seen some uh, objectives that are mostly community oriented rather than uh, completing certain features. We have helped the council formulate the community engagement survey questions. I'm not sure if there is a presentation for that during the release party. No? Okay. But I'm sure there will be a blog post posted in a few days. So we did have a, um, yes, we did have a session at Nest, which you can find online yeah. on YouTube. And we do have a blog post in the works. Uh, our work in progress thing uh, is the role handbooks. This is one of the greatest and biggest things that we need before we launch the, the revamp and make it uh, market as complete because we want to make sure that we have documentation about most processes uh, in the ambassadors program. And also we are trying to come up, oh, yeah, the logic model. I wonder who requested that. <laughs> uh, so the role handbooks uh, are basically our documentation that we are currently working on. And we have had quite some help from community members, both to help us create the documentation and also publish it. We had an outreach intern during summertime working mostly with Marie and try to create some really nice designs about the different uh, outreach group within Fedora. And we have been briefing the entire community with monthly. We try to, to post monthly blog posts, but uh, we lost track of that. But we have been in several events presenting our updates. So I think we have had more events than blog posts, actually. But that's fine, because we have also shared uh, what we've been doing. Um, this is it, briefly, what we have been doing in the past months. So extending on the things that we have already been doing for some time, we have presented at a bunch of events, uh, Fedora specific being the Nest and otherwise open source as open source conference, FFCon, CZ, US, and we would probably be presenting on a couple of more. Uh, the whole idea here is that we try to focus our at specific events, like for example, Nest, we did this two hour long talk fest where we went ahead, we asked community members to join in, initialize some of these pages that we needed, and then moved on ahead with it. Uh, next slide, please, Mir. So, uh, talking about a bit of deliverables, so this, is, this is where we see the final outcome of the entire revamp, short and long. So something that we have able to formalize is the is the representation towards Mindshare. So Mindshare, as you all know, is a collection of all teams, and they have representatives over there. We have been able to document and finalize what are their responsibilities, how do they look like, how what they represent, what they bring to the table, how they vote, and stuff like that as a part of documentation. We have extensively done a couple of community outreach surveys and anonymous polls, and we have gotten some good amount of data which helps us understand what we are missing and what are the points that we need to address. Moving on, we have something that we have been, that is in works, which is a translation of the role handbooks that Mariana talked about in five to eight key languages, which would help more and more community adoption in the coming years. And more importantly, we are focusing to make sure that the, you know, every year we have one of these community health surveys going on and which would 
kind of tell us or rather give us a pulse on what's going right, what's not going right, what can we do it. Uh, some certain things are work in progress and these are some things, one of which is coming sometime next week is a Halloween update post, well we are way ahead of Halloween but then there's a Halloween update post coming in which would mention some of the things which are already in works, uh, almost about to be complete and you may follow that on community blog post. Other than that, we have almost completed the documentation for role handbooks, including comops, the joint side advocates and ambassadors. We are just waiting for, um, other than that, we have also completed uh, a part of the badges, the community badges bits. Uh, Murray had the intern, the outreach intern work on the badges, which helped us to kind of make sure that we have those pages up and live and these badges would be pushed on as as the time goes by the the thing we are trying to work on extensively is rolling out a marketing plan and this would basically be in conjunction with multiple teams uh, design the the current marketing team and a lot of community members we would be opening up community revamp calls which you would be able to hear about in a couple of days uh, to a, a week time frame in community blog again so we, we kind of post all of these goodness and the new hotness that we have on the community blog, so keep following us. That's mostly where we record most of these progresses. Uh, moving on to the marketing page. Cool. Thank you, Sinatra. I noticed we had an error. There was the translations was supposed to be in the in progress. So well, it's really just dependent on finishing up the documentation, but we wanna work with our translations team to make sure that the documents are accessible for everyone. So I'm gonna talk just a little bit about the next steps and what we're hoping to accomplish in basically the next three to six months. This is our goal. Um, Mariana, Sumantro and I have been doing doc sprints almost every Friday for a couple hours uh, for I wanna say the last two or three months. So we're on these docs. Um, there's a lot to get through as far as the, um, all the ambassador documentation goes. It's just extensive and you go on one page and you find a bunch more links and you're like, oh gosh, we gotta roll this in too. So I think we have a good idea of, of where everything is now and um, that's kind of our chunkiest thing that we're finishing up is that documentation. We had a couple hiccups with um, the docs pages, um, but I think we've overcome them at this point. Um, as Sumantra mentioned, um, we're working on a marketing plan. So that marketing plan is really to help the Dorans understand what, we, what we've done here and to help them access that new information and um, have those community calls. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more of that, but um, basically we want folks to be able to adapt this as easily as they possibly can and we're there to guide that process. So moving forward, we would like to start up uh, an outreach call. So that will be a monthly call um, where we talk about all sorts of things, but really the newest outreach initiatives that we're trying to do. People could come there with requests. Um, and I'd like to see it become an active place that people can, you know, do things for Fedora. Like you go there and you get stuff done. So that's what we're looking for for that outreach call. Um, we're going to want to have people test the documentation. We're only three people. So there's probably some changes and updates and things that might need to happen. We probably haven't thought of every single thing. So Part of those first couple months with our outreach calls and the people who are there and interested, we're gonna want your help on just making sure it's right, right? And and refining it to a place where we have more and more eyes on it. Um, we do have to work a bit more on our informal polls. These are polls that we wanna use on discussion to kind of get an idea of how people are feeling about the revamp. Do they understand what we've done? And then moving forward, thinking about community engagement and outreach in general. Um, there's a couple loose ends, like just little things like we're 
we need to check back in with the Mindshare probably because it's been a year since we did that. Hey, who's active, who's not? Um, and she probably took a look at the ambassador group again. So there's a couple things we're still, still wrapping up there. And at the end of our old presentation, we kind of talked about what we we're focusing on. So I wanted to make sure that we reiterate that here. Um, this whole process, we've been focused on sustainability, accessibility, empowering individuals, having a long-term strategy in place, building in recognition to people, and, and, and our process really listening to feedback as we go and adapting. So this has been um, what we've kept in the front of our minds as we continue to work on things. So I think that is it for today. And I see that we actually have a question here. Um, okay, so first question is, this is a difficult question and I have thought of it before, but I have no answers as of yet. Are there possible ways of involving persons with neurodiversities such as Down syndrome? So absolutely, we hope that folks who are neurodiverse are already feeling comfortable and welcome in the Fedora community. Um, as far as community outreach and what kinds of ways neurodiverse folks could be involved in that, I think we need to maybe hear from people who are neurodiverse. Like how can we make this documentation a little more accessible or are, do these processes, um, are they working? Um, I think, you know, having folks who are neurodiverse advising is probably like one of the best ways to make like our process better now just outreach in general i think you know just like all of us we all have our networks and most neurodiverse people are connected with other neurodiverse people so i guess i would hope that they would feel comfortable bringing fedora to those places as a potential you know community to get involved in that's welcoming to neurodiverse people but of course we want to make sure that it is indeed welcoming. So, you know, it's probably something that needs to be a longer conversation. So Mariana or Sumantro, feel free. Yeah, I would like to add that I really do agree with Murray here. Hi, having people from this community actually advising us and telling what we can do to that direction would, have, would be amazing because no matter how much we brainstorm into writing documentation, if you're not into somebody's shoes, you cannot actually see the problem or the issue from somebody else's perspective. And also in order to make people feel welcoming, there is um, a code of conduct that has been revised recently, and it is there to make sure that everybody feels comfortable and not excluded. But again, in case there is something that um, we can optimize, I think everybody is open to suggestions and see what we can we can do better. So I will read the next question in case there is anybody to add something. Okay. Are there any initiatives target at making is at making it smoothing the sponsorship process for new packagers? So I will take that question and um, the answer is no. So the the way this outreach initiative is aligned is to make sure the outreach teams, which are our com ops team, the joint team, the these teams and the ambassadors, of course, they get the first priority benefit uh, of this entire revamp. Of course, if if something needs to be done in the packager level or the sponsorship towards the packager level, that is supposed to be tackled by Fesco. To the best of my knowledge, uh, if someone is there for this call, you might want to help him out. Cool. Thank you, Sumatra. All right, we have another question. How do we decide when this objective is complete and successful? What do we do with any aspects which are not finished? So that's kind of what we we're trying to show on that last side. Like, these are the things we have complete. These are the things we have in progress. And based on how far we actually are in that documentation, I want to say we're like 75 to 80% done. 
Mariana and Sumatra, maybe thumbs up, thumbs down, something like that. Um, I think we can call it done, like, or closer to done when that documentation is done, right? Like, the documentation is going to be the basis for moving forward with all of this. So I think once the documentation is done, that's really when we can say that it's a success. Um, but I don't really think it's going to be complete. Um, I want to say maybe we'll have like a ramping down time. So like we'd like to call the objective complete, but the three of us still want to go to those outreach calls um, for like six months at least. And then we've kind of written the F cake into that call as, um, you know, part of that role being, being on that call and being a point of connection. So I'll basically always be involved in continuing, but I think there's going to be some small parts that we might not finish. And for example, that's kind of the marketing area. When I say that, I mean the marketing team because it's not very active. So it's a little bit hard to know where to go with some of that documentation and, and what to do. So we've kind of been having a conversation about that. Like we definitely want to have that marketing plan to roll things out for the community, but the team itself is, has not been active for some time. So Mariana, did you want to add something there? Yeah, I wanted to add that when it comes to documentation, the way that we have worked so far is by going through the documentation that already exists keep some parts of it and update it and reward it and actually come up with new documentation for some new process because some of them are actually very um, outdated and some processes do not exist anymore. Uh, besides creating the documentation and writing it, we had some technical uh, problems when it comes to publishing it on the dark side. So that took us a bit step back. But when it comes to um, marking the revamp as complete and finished, I would say that even when we launch the, the revamp, I'm sure that in the upcoming months, there will be things that we will change based on the community's feedback. Because no matter what we say and set for now, if we set a new process, I'm sure that somebody will suggest something else or even uh, the process itself would change without we, us realizing. So we will see um, during the first months what works best for people and adapt to that. So basically, I would say that even when we say that we are ready to launch it, a few things will still change and we will be there in the first months to, to check that everything will run smoothly. I don't know if Marie or Samantha want to add something. Yeah, my thing froze for a second, so I wasn't even sure what was happening. Um, I don't have anything more to add, Samantha. How about you? Uh, no, no thanks. So you guys summed up pretty nicely. So. Awesome. So I'm seeing some questions, I think, in the chat. So um, Phil, is the question, how does outreachy help contributors or how does outreach help contributors? Because outreachy is a thing. I'm not sure if you're talking about that. Um, outreach helps contributors, you know, do what they love to do, which is be passionate about Fedora. <laughs> um, so it helps them share the news, educate other people. So these are all resources and processes to help people do those things. And that's what we're focused on um, improving. Um, and then I see another question. How is the project organizing the transition to contributor? Fedora join seems inactive. Um, join is very active. I always see hundreds of messages in that chat channel. Um, and I know that the repo is pretty much alive and well. so. I'm not sure what experience you're having or where you're looking. So there's a, a lot of people in there willing to help out. Um, if you have questions or um, you're wondering what the next step is to become a contributor, join is definitely a great place to, to hang out and learn about that. Cool. 
Well, if there are no more questions, we went exactly 25 minutes, which is great for me. Um, and we'll see everybody online. Look for updates on the community blog. Yep. Oh, there's Thanks. a big message that just came in. <laughs> oh, it's about packaging. <laughs> All right, yeah. Sorry, Mariana, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to thank everybody for showing up today and for being part of our session.